Windows exfiltration with a USB thumb drive and a USB rubber ducky. Oh yeah. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of techno -less. It is, and we have plenty of stuff going on this episode. I'm super excited about my, my segment. Yeah? Yeah. I'm super excited about this season. We have so much cool stuff in the Ooh, works really? that I kind of don't want to... Like what? Remember. Well, no, no, no. It's just, I, I have <gasps> some really cool stuff planned. Uh, so you're not going to tell me? Into, stuff we've Man. been deep in development okay. for right. for a long Let's time. Let's talk, okay? Yeah, we yeah. will. After the show. Winky face. He. All right. <laughs> so um, one of our really good friends and also one of the guys who does the music for Hack 5, uh, he's done plenty of the stuff that we use, um, plenty of remixes and whatnot, Prono Bozo. Prono he is Bozo. releasing his brand new CD. It's currently on pre-order, so you can go over to pronobozo.com and get all the information. Um, it's available on iTunes right now, but he'll have it available after a grace period um, on every single other website that you can get music off of. Um, he didn't specify a release date, but it, I've already listened to it, and it's really, really good. Oh, so. you got the hookup? Yeah. Well, I bought I bought the album on iTunes, of oh, course. Right. Support I one of our musical and, artists. Let me go and install iTunes. <laughs> Pseudo apt get. This is why I have a Linux machine and a Windows machine. iTunes. You yeah. know, I did a segment about that, right? Oh, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, dude. It's... Oh, well. I, I did a segment about how you can put stuff on your Linux machine. Oh, right, BTW. Right, right. But why on <laughs> earth would you? Yeah, see, that's I even, yeah. So I, now I you thought can that use was Internet Explorer. Using, <laughs> right, but I thought that was all about using Windows software on Linux. We haven't talked about using Mac software on Linux. Well, Actually, what's even Windows more fun version. is using Linux software on Mac. Mm. Paul should come on to this side of the camera and do a segment <laughs> about that. First huh? segment in like three huh, years. Paul? Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, either that, it, either that, Paul, or or we just roll your footage from two thousand eight. Yes. Now. Oh my God. Yeah, it's like Paul with crazy hair. You guys. I remember it. the crazy hair, man. Those were good times. Yeah. It's like bringing back the old school right there. All right. Well, speaking of crazy hair, what are you doing with your Linux machine right now? Are you trying to say I have crazy hair? No. Nah, the, there wasn't actually a segue there. <laughs> okay. Well, this week I decided to check out some benchmarking techniques that you can use in Linux. So we know there's plenty of them out there for Windows machines, you know, PC Mark and whatnot. But there's, n I didn't know if there was anything for Linux. So I searched out there. I found out there is a website. It's uh, howtoforge.com, and they have this whole how-to about how to benchmark your system from CPU processing speeds to file I.O., input, output, woohoo, and MySQL. I don't have MySQL installed on mine because I don't need it at the moment, but I did find out some interesting things about my uh, CPU processing speed. <laughs> yeah, this is good stuff. I mean, you know, you can't go to a LAN party without flexing your benchmark. Exactly. You know, that's what we used to do with, like, Crisis and everything else. And so yeah. the same should hold true with Linux. I've done really nasty, like, like set and awk, piping to DD, piping to time, Ooh. kind of really nasty long blah, commands blah, in blah, Linux blah, to blah. kind of like semi benchmark, uh, but never using a suite like this. So walk me through it. What, awesome. what do I have okay. to do to get started? So first of all, you're going to need a program called Sysbench. That's S-Y-S-B-E-N-C-H. So go ahead and install that if you haven't already. Up to get install Sysbench. Yay. And, I have Sysbench um, now. Yeah, if you want to check it out, there's tons of information in the man page as well, um, all the different parameters that you can use with it. So it's it's extremely long. <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't read the entire thing. But um, yeah, it's very interesting. Tons of information that you can use with this program. But just to name a few, we can test our CPU speed. So the reason why I brought you on today was to find out whose machine is fastest. Because this is fun. Because they look exactly the same, This right? is, uh, well, except mine has cooler stickers on it. Oh, whatever. Panda, <laughs> hello. Oh, right. And they don't even know about the Panda unless they were they at DEF CON. See, this is why you need to... Quick, screen grab. That's all you got. I hope you got 1080p. <laughs> um, damn, okay. Revision 3 only releases in 720p. Oh, by the way, <laughs> FYI... Uh, YouTube actually gets a higher quality version than Revision 3. Really? That's been the case for a couple of years oh, now. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. BTW, it's should we mention our awesome subscribers on YouTube? Oh, our YouTube subscribers are awesome. I, I don't pander to that stuff. But yes. But dude. Nice, nice way to go, guys. Yeah. Yeah, next, next month. Next man. month. Next That's month. exciting. Okay. All right. So. 
this is what you're going <laughs> Back to, to need your regularly to do. scheduled segment <laughs> in progress. All right, so um, I'm just going to copy and paste it since I have it running over okay, here. Okay, well, tell me, what do I need to do? All right, so you're going to type in sysbench, this is the command, uh -huh. uh, space tac tac test equals CPU, space tac tac CPU, tac max, tac prime equals 20,000, so that's 20000, zero, 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 mm -hmm. space run. That's it? Yes. Now, before you type that in all the oh, way, yeah. I'm going to run mine at the same time. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So let me go over here. Go ahead and paste it in. Control Shift V. Yes. Three, two, all right. Beat me by, <laughs> oh, enough. there you go. <laughs> all right. So both of them say thread started doing CPU performance benchmark. Mm -hmm. And it's going to last about one minute or so. So while this is running, let's go ahead and speed it up. Here we go. Here we go. Not quite. I would. Total time, 28.7 seconds. Total time, 60.3. <laughs> this is wicked. So Let's do more prime numbers. I love this. <laughs> okay, so the, the really important ones up here are the total time, of course, um, your minimum max average, those are obvious. And then down here, your approximate percentile, this gives you your approximate milliseconds for your CPU processing speed. Yes, yeah. 2.98 <laughs> milliseconds. Yours is twice as fast as mine. Oh, yeah, it is. And I well, have an i3 in mine. i7. i7. So, so there you go. Yeah, it, it's very obvious what's going on on these two machines. Now, after this, I also wanted to check out file I.O. benchmarking. So this is trying to figure out how fast you can move files around. Whee! Hooray. Yay. You've got a 5400 RPM spinny disk in that thing. I do. What do you have in yours? I have a solid state disk from like last year. Okay, so I have plenty of room on my hard drive right now. <laughs> Remember when I said it was a solid state disk from last year? Yeah. I went cheap, it's a 32 gig. Oh, really? DF TAC H. I have like, I think I have like 128 gigs in this thing or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I have so. 12 gigs available. Oh. 12, count them. Oh. Let me see how many I have. What was that command again? DF space TAC H. TAC H, okay. Yeah. So I have, oh, 62, 62 gigs available. I'm okay. not benchmarking this. Yeah, so you probably can't benchmark this, but I can. So let me go ahead and copy and paste this file over. So the first thing you want to do is create a test file. This is going to be a file that is bigger than your RAM, because if you don't do it that way, your system is going to use your RAM cache to, and that's going to completely skew your results. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create oh. a file that's... See, I was going to do this with like a gig, but I've got four <laughs> gigs of RAM in here, so it'd just be like, how fast And I is only have like one gig. So I was able to do like a big 10 gig file, but I didn't have to go as big as 150 gigs like they do on their example website. Okay. So I went ahead and created that file. And then after that, I just copied and pasted this. And do an LS, because look at this. This is just okay. nasty. Just F LS. FYI, when you do this, yeah, it's yeah. just going to barf all over your directory. Yeah. So just maybe it's make some ugly. And each that. one of these is 80 megs. Hooray. Okay, cool. So right. go ahead and hit your uh, IO. Okay, so it's basically um, running the test file. I'm going to change the size to match the size that I created. So that's going to be 10 gigs. Go control E, go back to N, run. Now this is also going to take uh, just a couple of minutes to go, but at the end I'll be able to see how long it takes to transfer these files back and forth all over the place. So how'd you do? So, well, <laughs> uh, so total transferred 379 megabytes, uh, took 1.2 megabytes per second, 1.2. Cool. Yeah. Super slow, super slow. You know, Horribly there's, slow. um, <laughs> and that number is up here at the top where it says total transferred. So that's the important one that you want to look at right there. Everything else is pretty interesting too, but of course you need something to compare it to. So Darren, well, how okay, did you did a, do a benchmark? Uh, if you do DD, you can say your input file, for example, in this case, slash dev slash zero is, um, it's just a, in slash dev, there's always a file called zero. It contains just zeros. There's also a really cool one called you random uh, that has random You're stuff in random. there. You're random, No, you are. And, uh, and then the output <laughs> file 
and then how big I want it to do, and then the count 1024. So with the one meg and count 1024, this is going to do a gigabyte okay. of goodies cool. into that file that I just created. And there we go. I got 134 megabytes per second. That is, this is oh, apples and oranges, yeah. <laughs> you know. But that's the thing that's about all a benchmark. That's in RAM, isn't it? <laughs> much of that could have been in RAM. I'm not really sure. But that's yeah. an SSD for you. <laughs> but I think the thing to take away here is, oh, no, let's do it on yours. Here. I'm going to do it on yours. OK. I'm going to put a pound in front of that. And there we go. All right. Give it a sec. And this will only take a moment. There it goes. OK. Hooray. OK, so check that so out. So this is 56. 56.7. So my uh, solid state is almost three times faster than your 5400 RPM spinny disk. Really? <laughs> yeah. And no way. Mind you, this is like a best case scenario kind of test. <laughs> I like your benchmark program better. Uh, I do too. It's I awesome. think like the lesson learned is obviously like stop buying i3s, Shannon. Seriously. Uh, what? It was, like, it like was spend cheap. The extra hundred bucks cheap. or whatever it is. No, I it was it. like three hundred more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was in college. All right. And it then was, I was poor. I think the other important thing is though that like these tests mean nothing. Yeah. Alone. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So if I were not here with a very similar machine, it would just be a moot point. Yeah, it's very true. So um, there is one other test that you can run from this website. It's the MySQL benchmark. Of course, again, I'm not going to run through that since I don't have MySQL all set up on my machine. But it'll also give you a lot of pertinent data that you can use, especially if you're doing like a whole bunch of database loadups and a bunch of crazy stuff so if you're a dba you probably already know this stuff yeah. but if you're just wanting to like stress test your machine eh, which is fun my sequel. <laughs> why not yeah so that's um basically the rundown of different benchmarking techniques that you can use for linux they should send us their scores oh yeah dude yeah. yes um you know my twitter it's at snubs and then you can email us feedback at hack5.org with your benchmarking there you go Ooh, fun. yeah Tell us how it works. See if you can beat me oh, at 28 me seconds, 28.7 seconds. If you have other ways to do it, too. Yeah. Other than, you know, DD and my, the new place, ways that I found, Suspench. Woo! Yeah, cool. All right, well, let us know. We're going to be back in just a bit. Uh, but until then, uh, we will see you later. We're going to, we're going to, whoa, we're hovering. Or, oh, my gosh. Where are we going? It's crazy. What, what's happening? Oh, no. Wait. wait it's so weird. What's happening? Ah! Let me tell you guys about one of my favorite RFCs, RFC 920. It defined the very first top level domain. Do you guys know them? Com, US, EDU, Gov, Mill, and Org were some of the first five, but you know what wasn't actually on the list? .NET. And yet it still came into being at the same time in 1985 and is to this day, the third most popular top level domain right behind .com and .de. And get this, no registration or no special restrictions. Anyone can go ahead and get them. I get them, Shannon gets them, we get them at domain.com. They make it so fast, affordable, reliable, it's easy to use. And the guys over at domain.com, they're so cool. They're huge fans of Hack5 and you guys, so they want to hook you up. They're offering 15% off their already affordable domain names and hosting. So when you use the coupon code HAK5 at domain.com, check out, check out, you get the hookup and it hooks us up and hooks you up and everybody's just getting hooked up. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Last week's trivia question was, Advanced Encryption Standard, AES for short, was introduced in what year and by what establishment? And that answer is 2001 by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST for short. Now this week's question is, Ronald Rivest authored what cryptographic hash functions? You can answer that over at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack5 swag.